you know, uh, chicken or I need fish to be, you know, to be strong, to build muscle tissue. That is utter nonsense. The largest, strongest terrestrial animals on the planet are all herbivores. The biggest, strongest animals are all herbivores. When we bring in people and they're on meaty diets and we transition them to a plant-based diet, we always track what they're eating. Their vitamin intake goes up. Their nutrition overall goes up dramatically better. And these same people might worry in advance, will I get the nutrition that I need on a plant-based diet? The fact is, you're not getting the nutrition you need on a meat-based diet and you're going to get dramatically better nutrition on a plant-based diet. For an average-sized guy like myself, I need about 56 grams of protein a day. That's optimum. Probably I really need 30 to 40 grams a day. Diets that are really high in these protein create diabetes, create heart disease, create cancer, create the diseases that, we're, that I'm treating on a daily basis. But this is the opposite of what all the high-protein diet fads say. The food you eat determines the bacteria that live in your gut. While you eat animal flesh every day, you are summoning up bacteria that eat carnitine. And those bacteria will turn that carnitine into a molecule called trimethylamine. Your liver then turns that into trimethylamine oxide. That's a molecule from hell. That molecule drives cholesterol into the artery walls. And the people who are consuming this flesh-based diet are contributing to plaque building up. They may lose weight on this diet, and that's good. But what's happening inside your arteries, paleo friends? What's happening is that plaque is building up, and these are the folks who drop down at the gym at 39. Oh, he was lean and he looked really good. But where is that cholesterol going? It's going into your artery walls. So I believe these paleo folks are setting themselves up for an epidemic of clogged arteries, colon cancers, uh, autoimmune diseases. Uh, this is not a healthy diet. We are not carnivorous apes. Humans' closest living relatives are chimps, who get 97% of their calories from plants and the remaining 3% mostly from insects. Comparing the anatomy of true omnivores like bears who eat both meat and plants to frugivores like primates who eat almost exclusively plants, the differences are pretty clear. Frugivore teeth have flat molars for chewing plants, where omnivore teeth are serrated for stabbing and tearing flesh. Frugivore jaws can move forward and back and side to side. Omnivore jaws cannot. Omnivores have much stronger stomach acid for digesting meat compared to less acidic stomach acid of frugivores. The intestines of frugivores is nine times their body length compared to three times for omnivores. This is because meat will putrefy in the gut unless it is moved through quickly. If humans were indeed true omnivores, we would need to change our physiology and appearance quite a lot. But we fit every requirement of a frugivore. We may behave like omnivores, but anatomically, we're frugivores. Human beings, unlike bears and raccoons, and to some extent dogs, don't have that mixed anatomy and physiology that you see in the true omnivores, and thus we are not true omnivores. In humans, the canines have become really small and rounded and actually function like accessory incisors. They're utterly useless for ripping and tearing anything other than an envelope. So the idea that the mere presence of the canine somehow means that we're supposed to eat meat is silly. He was right. I always thought my canines were for meat, but what kind of animal could I actually kill and eat raw with these tiny teeth? The thought alone was disgusting. I mean, everybody loves a smoothie made with fruit and even some vegetables, but if you think about putting a fish or a piece of beef in a blender and grinding it up, the thought is absolutely repulsive. All these diseases I had learned about